Hello doctors. Welcome to the this presentation. We look at the topic which has created a lot of news. The adverse events associated with use of proton pump inhibitors. This is a summarized presentation of all recent publications and journals published on the adverse events associated with proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, which are commonly used drugs to reduce acid in the stomach for over two decades appear to be in the news worldwide. Though PPIs are in use for several years, the reports released in recent times on these drugs causing potentially threatening diseases are not ignorable. Some of the earlier reported issues being, hampering absorption of vitamin B12, iron, calcium, Clostridium difficile associated GI infections, possible drug interactions in patients who are consuming clopidogrel. Even US FDA has raised alerts on PPIs time and again on various side effects. A prominent study showed that co administration of PPI with clopidogrel reduces plasma concentrations of the active metabolite of clopidogrel by about 45% and the effect on platelet inhibition of clopidogrel is reduced by as much as 47 percent. In February 2016, JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association published an important study of PPI and kidney damage. This study by Dr. Benjamin Lazarus and his team made headlines across the globe. The JAMA study of 10,482 patients showed proton pump inhibitor use is associated with a higher risk of incident chronic kidney disease. It also said PPI use resulted in a higher risk of incident acute kidney injury. PPI usage was independently associated with a 20 to 50 percent higher risk of incident chronic kidney disease. Twice daily PPI dosing was associated with a higher risk of acute kidney injury than once daily dosing. In a German study published by JAMA Neurology in February 2016 said 77.9% female had a significantly increased risk of incident dementia compared with the patients not receiving PPI medications. The authors also concluded that the avoidance of PPI medication may prevent the development of dementia. In 2011, British Medical Journal, BMJ, published an important paper which was a nationwide propensity study of 19,925 patients for one year. The study was about proton pump inhibitor use and the risk of adverse cardiovascular events in aspirin-treated subjects with first-time myocardial infarction. It said that aspirin, Proton pump inhibitors together were associated with an increased risk of adverse cardiovascular events. This study also highlights two important parameters that raise the interests of doctors around the world. Firstly, the study showed increased mortality rates in patients with PPIs and aspirin than aspirin alone and second when compared the hazard ratios of various PPIs. Surprisingly pantoprazole showed as most hazardous among PPIs. This study showed that though all PPIs had a class effect of increased chances of myocardial infarction. In another landmark study published in Circulation 2013 by American Heart Association titled it as Unexpected Effect of Proton Pump Inhibitors. This study for the first time postulated that the elevation of cardiovascular risks in PPI patients is due to asymmetric dimethyl arginine. They named it as the ADMA pathway. In 2015, another authentic data mining study emerged from PLOS which again confirmed association of PPIs with risk of myocardial infarction event in general population. It also said that usage of PPIs is associated with a 2.22-fold increased risk of cardiovascular mortality. This study was more prominent as it was on general population with no history of any prior CV risks. It showed 16% average increased risk myocardial infarction with PPIs. It also highlighted pandoprazole as a molecule showing increased risk of 34% whereas 26% with omeprazole which are most commonly used in diabetic and hypertensive patients. Besides, the US FDA has given several alerts and restricted the use of PPIs to a maximum two weeks for the OTC versions of PPIs. In 2011, 
The FDA approved labeling updates of PPIs to include the risk of hypomagnesemia with prolonged use. Severe hypomagnesemia can lead to life-threatening adverse events such as heart arrhythmias and seizures. In 2012, the FDA issued a safety alert regarding the increased risk for CDAD with the use of PPIs. In 2014, the FDA approved labeling updates for several PPIs regarding the increased risk of vitamin B12 deficiency with prolonged use. Doctors across the world are now attempting and ensuring that proton pump inhibitors should be used with caution and never be overtly prescribed. Experts also say that there is an immediate need to educate their patients to avoid consuming prescription or over-the-counter PPIs unless guided by the doctors. The one thing common in all these and many more studies is that they compared with PPIs and H2 receptor blockers like ranitidine. The same studies showed that patients consuming H2 receptor blockers for long term had no such side effects that are noticed with PPIs. In 2011, BMJ that stated PPI association with risk of adverse cardiovascular events also mentioned that the increased risk was not observed with H2 blockers. BMJ again in 2015 said that PPIs appears to be associated with elevated risk of myocardial infarction whereas H2 receptor blockers showed no such association. In 2015, Flo's study also concluded that increased cardiovascular mortality associated with PPI use and no such increase associated with H2 blockers. Even the recent JAMA study of PPIs and kidney disease concluded that H2 receptor blockers did not show such events. In conclusion, it is noticed that up to 30 to 50 percent and in some cases even 70 percent of acid suppression therapy of PPIs may be inappropriate in outpatients and hospital inpatients. PPIs are effective in management but carry the risk of several potentially threatening outcomes which were not known earlier. However, all studies said H2 receptor blockers have shown no association of cardiovascular or chronic kidney disease related events. Always question the indication and risks of chronic PPI usage on a regular basis. Avoid use of long-term PPI. Use PPI ideally for 15 days or 7 to 8 weeks in only severe cases. A lifestyle modification is the best option especially for patients suffering from diabetes and hypertension with or without GERD. If need be for long-term. Use a H2 receptor blockers instead of increasing the risks with PPIs in your patients. We hope this presentation has given new insights for you to take further decision and caution while prescribing any proton pump inhibitors. Thank you.